All right, so now it's time for the man of the hour, Michael Foster. So just a little bit about himself. Uh, he studied uh, theater at Truman State University, where he also performed for three years with the TSU Tag Improv team. And now he's a six-year veteran of KC Improv Company, and he is currently the education director of KC Improv Company's training center. So he has a lot of credentials that really make him funny. <laughs> <laughs> so please help me in welcoming up Michael Foster. Gosh, it's a celebrity. <laughs> At least I like to think so. All right, thank you very much. My name is Michael Foster. Um, I am the education director at the Casey Improv Company. I'm gonna move over this way. Um, and just a quick little bit about myself. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, I love doing it. And I think my goal today is just to share a little bit about why I love it, what it's all about, and maybe give you guys some like insider information. Okay, so what I want to start with is um, who here has ever taken an improv class or performed improv before? Can you raise your hands? Oh, quite a few of you. Now here's the secret, is that everybody should be raising their hand. Ooh, I'm going to tell you why. Because we do improv constantly in our lives. Let me give you a scenario. Um, let's say you're uh, sitting on the couch watching Dance Moms, like you do, and uh, your significant other comes to the room and starts talking, but you're really focused on the show. And your significant other is like, Timothy, are, are you listening to me right now? Freeze. You have about, you have less than a few seconds, right, to respond. And to respond with a really well-crafted answer. Because a few seconds is like, okay, by that time, this person knows that you were not listening at all. So you have a millisecond. You have to think, okay, what were some of the keywords this person was saying that I can maybe craft into an answer? And if I'm smart, maybe I'll restate the question. Well, of course I was listening to you. You were talking about your sister and how much of a jerk she is. And I agree with you, honey. Okay? So that's improv. And it can happen in a meeting. If you're, if you're daydreaming, your boss is like, Johnson, what do you think about the proposal? I love it. And uh, looking back at the numbers in the third quarter, ooh, good buzzword there, right? Uh, I think there's going to be success. There's going to be synergy. There's going to be synergy. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay? And just having a conversation with your friend Jerry at lunch. Um, you might have some things you're going to bring to the table to talk about, like uh, the newest cute thing your son is doing, uh, your distress over the loss of your hair, uh, right? But then Jerry's going to say something, you're going to bounce off of that. And whenever you're bouncing ideas and coming up with new ideas on the spot, that's improv. So we're doing that constantly. Um, and I have to think that improv in the entertainment world has been around forever. And I think that because I do have a background in theater, I've done plays. And if you've ever been part of a production, whether it was like elementary school, middle school, high school, whatever, you know that there's somebody who's not good at memorizing things, and that person's going to drop the ball, and they're not going to say their line. So, let's see. Um, this second right here, give me a really dramatic line from a play. The really dramatic, like, Oscar-style moment from this front, front two rows. What's a really dramatic line? I was not angry when I came to France until this moment. I was not angry. When I came to France until this, this moment. Okay, I wasn't angry when I came to France until this moment, okay? And then your actor friend, he's supposed to say that line, right? And there's just like dead silence. And you have to, the show must go on, so you need to come up with something. So maybe it might be something like, how are you feeling right now, <laughs> right? You look, I'm looking at your face and I feel like you're looking angry. Would that sum up, would that sum up what you're feeling right now? And then that person goes, oh, that was my line. Um, and then the show goes, so um, improv comedy, improvisational comedy, that uh, my group, that I'm a part of the Kansas City Improv Company, and different groups around town, Comedy City, um, there's a group that works out of the Uptown Arts Theater, Chess with Death. Um, this, this style of comedy started coming around, I believe, in the mid, the mid to late 60s. Um, and that was when people started putting names to things, and, started, and there was this vocabulary, there was the lingo, there was a language that started to develop in a community. And so then, that leads to different theaters popping up around the country. You might have heard of Second City, uh, the Upright Citizens Brigade, Improv Olympic, okay? And there's, and those are like some of the main ones. Um, and then we also have some minor ones spread around the country. And you'd be, be hard-pressed to go to somewhere in the United States and not find some kind of improv theater, no matter how small. Um, so, yes, moving on. I want to talk about um, how it works, in case you haven't been to an improv show. Um, so what do, what do the improv players need? Shout it out. What if they need something, don't they? What do, what do they need? A topic. A topic. A suggestion, a what we call in the biz, an ask for. Okay, we're gonna practice that right now. 
This is open to everybody in the room. In a second, I'm gonna ask you what your favorite color is, and you're gonna respond. You're gonna shout it out without even thinking about it. What's your favorite color? <laughs> Excellent. And that was improv. We just did that right there together. <laughs> and we would take that. Now, we'd probably not ask you that. We might ask you something like this. What is something um, you should never say to somebody who just tripped and fell? What is, what is that? What is something you should never say to that person? <laughs> now, what have I heard? <laughs> delivered with gusto. Now everybody else is here like, vroom, vroom. and that's okay. I'm going to take what I hear and I'm going to use it in a show. And if, you, and if someone doesn't use your suggestion in the show, I don't want you to get offended. Um, maybe it was a bad suggestion, I don't know. Or maybe you just wasn't heard. But maybe you'd get a chance to use it again later. So I would use it, what did you say? It was over here, you're too fat. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so we're going to get that asked for and then we're going to incorporate it into a scene. Okay, and that's what the fun part about improv is we like to prove to you that we're making it up on the spot. Because otherwise you might have this idea of like, that was a little too funny, maybe they wrote that beforehand. And we don't want you to have that impression. We want, we want you to know that we're making it up on the spot. Um, and so let me give you a little tip. If you go see the improv show and you're an audience member, we want you to think of something really creative to shout out. Okay, because a lot of times we might ask for like an occupation or uh, a line from a movie or like a song. And we want you to think outside the box, because you know what? That makes us really invigorated. It makes us really excited. Um, and you'll see that on stage. You'll see, like, if you just, like, wash our faces, if we get something, what's an occupation? Mortician! I guess we're doing this again. Okay. Plumber! What's a hobby? Taxidermy! We've, oh, we've gotten those. We've done it. And we've excelled at them. We want you to think outside the box. So just think about that. And you know what? We can't pre-plan anything, but if you're an audience member, you can pre-plan the heck out of it. Bring an index card, write down some really fun stuff that you don't think we could do or have ever done. So that's just a little tip. Okay, so moving on. Um, so there's two major branches of improv. There is short form and there's long form. Now raise your hand, have you ever seen the television show Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's a lot of hands. Yeah, that's usually like that, that the, t the, the kind of the quarter show, that's where we can like touch base with people and say, okay, you've seen that. So we know what, that's not all of what improv is about. Um, it's a good part of it, and it has the basics. The basics being a scene. There's going to be a scene that's happening. Um, and the group I perform with, the KC Improv Company, we do short form and long form. Um, there's a group, Comedy City, they specialize in short form. They have really fun competitions. Um, and then Chess with Death out of Uptown Arts Bar, they just do long form. And so we do both, and it's about a scene. And with short form, it's very fast. It's fast, it's gimmicky, it's fun, and usually there's a host. And there's a host getting suggestions from you folks, okay? Um, and we take that scene, and with short form, we layer it. We put layers on top of it, okay? So really, uh, let me give you an example. There's a really fun game called Alphabet. Uh, and basically, we're gonna have a scene, and the scene is generally two or more people. And they're gonna be on stage, and they're gonna be characters. Um, and when I perform, I like to play really big characters that are not like myself at all. But some improvisers, they can just like tweak themselves a little bit and still be a different character. So basically talking in their same voice, but just maybe having some kind of interesting posture going on. Um, and so, and that's really impressive too. And so let's say we're doing alphabet and um, it's a scene, let's say between like a mother and a son, right? And the way we would get a letter. And we, so each line has to start with that letter and then the subsequent letter in the alphabet. So let's say letter T, okay. So letter T, Timothy, I'm looking at your report card and I'm very disappointed. And I don't, I think if you do not get better grades, we're gonna have to be taking away privileges and maybe taking away the car. Okay, and so that starts with T. Now, Timothy, whoever's playing Timothy, could be a man or a woman. I play women on stage, I play them very well. <laughs> I've been asked out on several dates. That's a lie, because I wear my wedding ring all the time. Anyway, uh, okay, so now we're on the letter U. So Timothy might say something like, uh, understood, mom. Uh, very well, I see that this attitude is not gonna change and that we're gonna have to start doing it, whatever. And now we're on the letter X. I'm gonna give you a tip. When we get to the letter X, you're gonna hear like just a few words if you see this game, because there's only a few words to start with X. And my go-to is always, Xavier, could you get in here and talk to your son, please? <laughs> you're gonna hear Xavier. You're gonna hear xenophobia. You're gonna hear xylophone. I think that's it. And let's, and let's, let me hear it. What other words start with X? X-ray. Oh, X-ray, that's a good one. Xanadu. Xerxes, ooh, we've never done that one. I'm gonna put that in my cap, I'm gonna save that for later. So Xerxes, and so then, then you, if you use it, then you can somehow make this about 
the Spartan conflict, the movie 300. <laughs> so, and that's what it's about. It's about taking a scene and layering on top of it. So um, that's an example of a game we, uh, we do sometimes. Sometimes it might be something like genres, where we take a scene, uh, and it could be about um, maybe two women fighting over a guy, or fighting over something. And, and that's just the scene we say, cut. And then we make a genre about it. So Western. Um, and then we need to make the scene a Western. Well, we need to take those same elements, those same basic elements, two people fighting over something, and put it in like a Western world. So now maybe they are two like gunslingers, and maybe now they're fighting over a horse. They're like, who does this horse belong to? And then it's sci-fi, and now instead of the gunslingers, they've got phasers, and maybe this is like a space alien, right? <clears throat> but you keep the same emotions, and you keep the same conflict, or whatever the scene's about. It's about keeping the same signposts. So that's a little bit of and some insider information there. So that's short form. It's very fast. It's very fun. Um, I love doing it. And there's also long form. Um, and long form is a little bit different because it's basically an improvised play, usually um, 20 to 25 minutes. But it has that same set foundation of the scene. Two or more people. Well, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen is we have characters. They have emotions towards each other. And they're going to explore. And they're going to do this with energy and gusto. And something interesting is going to come out of this. Let's say you have a scene is like a mad scientist and like an Igor type character, right? Um, and they're just exploring, and they're going to figure out what is the most fun that's happening in this scene. Is it the fact that maybe the scientist he had a line like, "Igor, you and me will rule the world," and then Igor maybe comes in, "I, excuse me." I, Master, you and I will go to will. Okay? So maybe with that little correction, maybe that's the most fun. And so then it goes on. Igor continues to correct the mad scientist until it's revealed that this guy really doesn't know anything at all. Igor is like the mastermind. All right? And we take something that, like a trope, something you're used to, the mad scientist as the high stats character, and then like Igor, and we flip it on its head. Maybe it's the fact that each creature they bring back to life is just like normal and not weird in any way possible. You know, maybe they bring something back, hey, totally good. Oh, this is wonderful. Uh, I wish to make the world a better place and not terrorize anybody. Igor! And so maybe that is the most interesting thing. So we find what is the most interesting thing, and we heighten it. And we call that in the biz, raising the stakes. Okay? And uh, so that's a little information. So you're going to notice that. We figure out what is the most interesting, and we raise the stakes on it. If it's, maybe it's a scene about somebody doing a term paper, and they really got to get this term paper done. And people just like keep entering the room, and raising the stakes on this, like talking about this party that they cannot miss. Like, I've got to get my term paper done. This, oh man, like Jennifer's going to be there. She loves you. Like she's professing her love. She's reading poetry about you right now at this party, right? And like, and it's just, I got to get this term paper done. And then like this party just becomes more and more epic. And then now there's just like more and more obstacles keeping this person, right? And we heighten it. And if we're really good improvisers, we have really good sense of comedic timing, and we know when to end that. We know when like, this person's like, done, and they just leave, and they go to the party. And we, have, and we have to know that, because otherwise it would just get stale. And we don't want that. We want the energy to keep going. We want the fun to keep going. And so comedic timing is, is a big part of that. And with long form, um, there's a lot of times there's an opening. Um, and what I mean by that is um, sometimes we'll just get a suggestion. So give me a word that starts with H. You guys can actually do this. Give me a word that starts with H. Yeah. Horse Was I heard horse something? Horse ring. Horse Wrangler, okay. So what if we get that suggestion? Well, how am I gonna use that? This scene could involve a Horse Wrangler. Um, I hear that, I think Horse Whisperer. So maybe I'll be a Horse Whisperer type character. Or maybe I'll just be like some kind of weird pet Whisperer. Uh, as long as it came from your suggestion, it doesn't have to literally be that. It, has, it can be inspired by that. Um, so Horse, maybe I'm a talking horse. I could come in as a talking horse. Maybe I think Wrangler, Wrangler jeans. And maybe I'm a jean designer. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to use a suggestion, and we like to think of creative ways. Because um, we, like we don't like to take the simplest route, we think like to take the route that is the most fun. Uh, and sometimes there's an opening, sometimes you might have somebody tell a story about themselves, and we'll take little bits from that story. We won't reenact that story because you've heard that story, and that person's a good storyteller, their job has already been done. What we're going to do is we're going to take little bits. Maybe there's a line of dialogue that's really fun. Maybe there's like an uncle they mentioned who's really kooky, and we'd love to see that person interact with other people. Um, so, so sometimes there's an opening like that, um, and they go and, and we perform 20, 25 minutes. Um, and what happens is you don't stay with one scene. In improv, anything is possible. It's a wonderful thing, and that's the reason I keep going back to it, and that's the reason like we have fans who keep coming back to it because anything is possible. You could say 
you know, I just hope that twister does not come and wreck the house I just built. Well, guess what? It is going to come and wreck that house you just built. And it's going to be, that twister's going to come on stage. Can you believe it? A tornado on stage. And it's really just something going, shh. <laughs> okay? And, but it's just fun. It, you could do that. You could create natural disasters on stage. You can create uh, spaceships, environments, ancient Rome. It can happen on stage. And it's going to happen in a theater that's just, it's just a black box theater. And there's just like a couple big boxes. And there's a couple of chairs. And using our bodies and our imagination and the audience's disbelief, we can do that. We can create that right there on stage. So that's long form. It's, uh, like it says, it's long, right? 20, 25 minutes. And you can, you can say, I really like this character. And this is me, the improviser. I really like, really like seeing this character on stage. So I want to see, put this character in like a really uncomfortable position or put them in a, in a scenario where it, they would not be good for them. So like maybe you might have a character who's like, I will never be happy again. And then so that's, that's basically a dare to me as an improviser. If I'm off stage, they're daring me to try and make them happy again. So what I might do is I might come in and I might tag out somebody who's in the scene with them. Um, and I might come in and be like, puppies! And they go, oh no. And like, no, they're not happy. So we have to raise the stakes. We have to keep making things that will maybe make them happy. And usually there's a rule of threes. Have you guys heard of that? The rule, the comedic rule of threes? So usually after the third one, we'll find some way to make that person happy. So that's the way it works, is follow that fun. What are the fun characters we want to see on stage? What are the situations that we really want to put them in? And we'll tell a story, we'll have like a story arc uh, through that 20, 25 minutes. Um, and so that's long form. Um, and so how does it work? Well, let me tell you how it works. It works with the general principle of yes and. and you, have you guys heard of that? Mm -hmm. Yes and. And the way that works is characters don't have to agree on stage. Usually there's a lot of times there can be conflict on stage. It means that there's a general agreement between anybody who's participating. That if I bring forth an idea, you're not going to shut it down. What we call in the biz denial. You're not going to deny it. You're going to accept it and you're going to and it. You're going to build upon it. Okay, so if I'm on stage and, um, or if I'm, on, I'm off stage and I feel like this person is standing and I'm looking at her and I feel like she's standing at the altar, I might come on stage and be, do something like, stop the ceremony, Janice, I love you. Leave him, be with me, okay? And then my scene partner's like, uh, Timothy, I'm just getting a haircut, okay? I don't know why she would do that character, but it's a terrible character, but that's, that's what I came out of my mouth and we're rolling with it, okay? <laughs> Timothy, I just, I'm getting my hair cut. Okay, she's kind of shut down the premise I just presented, which was, this is a wedding, I try, I'm objecting to it. And by doing that, the audience is confused, I'm kind of confused. Um, I don't know if I trust this person very much now on stage, because if I bring forth another idea, is that gonna get denied as well? And so it kind of just halts the momentum, and so that's what Yes Game is all about. And a lot of times there are like happy accidents that happen. Um, there was a, a scene, that, I heard of where somebody, instead of saying Starbucks, they said Starbucks. And uh, unintentional, unintentional. So then they talked about this place called Starbucks for like 10 minutes about, the, uh, about, about what, what was going to happen at Starbucks and what kind of coffee they served. And so there are happy accidents like that. And it's all about support. Uh, and it's one of the amazing things about improv it's a really tight knit, fun community where, and there's trust there, where if you bring forth an idea, it's not going to get shut down, it's going to get supported, it's going to get built upon and there's going to be a lot of fun and energy in doing that. Um, and so a, a, a part of that is listening. Um, and like I said, a lot of times improv is like a dare. And so you have to listen for those cues. Um, if this scene takes place at like a subway and there's like a couple sandwich artists and they're talking about how much of a jerk their boss is, like they hate this guy so much, that's my cue that we need to see this boss. And I can come on and be the biggest jerk possible or if I wanted to mess with them or mess with the audience, uh, I could come on and be like the nicest person possible. And that would be a really fun game too. Gosh, I hate Gary. He's just, he's just a jerk. Hey guys, I'm so glad to see you. You're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> I, you know, in the budget I only, in the budget I only have, uh, I can only give one promotion, but dang it, I think I'm gonna give you both promotions. And then he leaves. But then they have to still commit to what they said before. They're like, such a jerk! <laughs> you know, and so that's my cue that I need to come on stage. And that's what it's about. And if you watch a scene, you'll notice that. We're listening for those cues, and you're like, I bet someone's going to come on stage. And a lot of times, um, a scene will kind of derail if we don't fulfill like, your audience expectations. You know, if something's mentioned, we don't want to lose it. We don't want to drop it. We want to fulfill those expectations. So that's another thing. And um, I won't say that to do it professionally, you don't have to have a sense of community timing uh, or have some, kind of, some natural talent. 
Uh, but I will say that the, the basics are that. They're very basic. And anyone could try it and um, to, could take a class and learn something from it and see how easy it is to, to build something and have other people build upon it. Um, and another thing you might notice is group mind. And what that means, that's another improv term, is we, when you practice with a group of people for so long, you sometimes you can anticipate what they're going to do, and they can anticipate what you're going to do. And so a lot of times when you see something like happening frenetically and very quickly on stage, and it's like, how do they know? That's part of the reason, is we've worked together so long, we can kind of anticipate each other. And we just build that ensemble spirit. Um, and that's one of the reasons that you might see something like that. And we have all kinds of techniques and tools. We can watch a scene and be like, they keep talking about the prom, and they're going to the prom. I think the audience wants to see the prom. So if I'm off stage, I can go, cut to the prom. And now they're at the prom. And they kind of have to do it. Now, if they don't do it, that's again like a denial. That puts a, that puts a stop to the scene. Uh, we want to fulfill the expectations of the audience. And so we can do that through those tools. We can tag out a character and now talk to this character. We can, sometimes we'll run across the stage and wipe. That means we're starting a new scene. If you ever see that, you're like, what are they doing? That's what we're doing. We're wiping, we're starting a new scene, we're starting a new chapter. Like anything is possible, and we have those te techniques at our disposal. Um, and we rehearse. A lot of people are wondering, how do you practice something that you just make up on the spot? We rehearse. We meet uh, every week uh, for about two, two and a half hours, and we practice the games that we're going to do, um, and we practice um, our long form formats, because there are different formats. Uh, right now, uh, the KC Improv Company is working on a musical format. So, like an improvised musical with singing and piano, and we have to make it up on the spot, and it's terrifying. But I'm doing it, and I, hopefully I will do it well. So there's different, there's different formats in that regard, and we, and we practice because we want to get better at it. Jobs, you know, just like you would with a, a normal job. We go to festivals. Uh, sometimes we go to, like, the, I think we just got accepted to the Des Moines Festival. We might go there. We might teach a workshop. We might take a workshop. We sometimes have guest teachers come in and teach us things like musical improv. So we do that. We give each other notes. Well, we have, our director gives us notes, and we just get better at it. So that's um, because if we just met, if we just did a show, we hadn't seen each other for like a month, it wouldn't be a very good show. It'd be awkward, it'd be kind of clunky, and we wouldn't feel very confident. And if we don't feel very confident, we're not having fun. And if the people on stage aren't having fun, you, the audience, are not having fun. Um, so what else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about, um, like if you're interested in getting involved, how you might do that. I know I got involved because I did theater, and I love performing, and I love making people laugh. Uh, some people get involved and they take classes just because they want to try something new, and I would encourage you to do that. You don't have to make a big commitment. There's uh, drop-in classes at the Kick Comedy Theater on Saturdays. There's drop-in classes Wednesdays at the Uptown Arts Bar, and then you just check it out. Uh, and people get involved because they want to try something new, maybe make new friends, maybe make a new hobby. Some people, the most unlikely people will discover it, they're really good at this. And they'll audition and they'll get into an improv group, and it's kind of amazing. Um, and the people who take classes, they get better. And sometimes they might audition and get into an improv group. So people come at it for different reasons. People do it maybe sometimes to improve confidence, uh, their public speaking ability, things like that. So if you're interested in how you get into it, um, I got into it just because I saw there was an audition on Casey Stage's website. So if you're ever interested in how that works, that's, based, that's kind of it. And there's a lot of different ways to get involved. Um, afterwards, if you have any questions or something, you can ask me about that. Um, and like I said, I would encourage you to seek out improv, and not just come see us at the Kit Comedy Theater, but there's um, Uptown Arts Park, Chess with Death, there's also Comedy City, and sometimes there'll be little different little shows all around town. Usually you can find those like on the, on the pitch uh, calendar, or you can go to some of these improv groups' websites. So I would encourage you to try it. You might be good at it. It's fun. There's a lot of support and trust there. I enjoy doing it. I hope you learned something. I hope I taught you something. I'm going to look at this next card and see if it has anything additional. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> so um, I think we're going to open up to a few questions. Yeah, you say questions. Okay. This will be exciting. Anyone have Yes. Is there a website you can go to to find a lot of these lists of these companies you're talking about and these classes? Well, uh, I know for our group, the website is uh, kcimprov.com. Um, I think Comedy Cities is comedycity.cc. But basically, you just there's a lot of separate ones. There's not, there's not one that can say, hey, these, this, for this, have all Yeah, so we don't, we don't have like a general like uh, Kansas City improv. Yeah. Like the, and like have all the things like that. Yeah. So basically your best bet is just like to, so uh, pitch. yeah, or just Google, Google, Google the groups. Google, yeah. I can't talk. Um, and just seek them out that way. 
that makes any sense. And like I said, a lot of people have different classes. Uh, we do, uh, I not only perform, I do instruction. Uh, we do those uh, Monday nights, most Monday nights, and it's like eight week long classes. And those are a lot of fun. And different levels, there's like level one through four, and you kind of progress. Yeah? When you get feedback from the crowd, what? how do you know when to approach more risque topics or, or when to, how offensive you can be? How do you know mm, when good to question. Basically, the we just, actual people? Yeah, we just get a read on the crowd. And we kind of look and we see like kind of what the demographic is before here. And we're like, okay, this crowd's not laughing at that. We shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> Whatever that was, let's go in a different direction. And let's find what they do like. Uh, but we don't focus entirely, entirely on that. Uh, now, uh, the Kit Comedy Theater, where, where I perform, those shows are rated R. But when we do like private gigs and stuff, we generally we keep those we keep those PG. That makes sense. So we keep it. So we know to do that just because we want to make everyone feel comfortable. We don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, you know. And I, I'm and we're just as funny. I'll, I'll say that we don't use like vulgarity and like what we call in the biz brown humor. We don't use those uh, as for obvious reasons. Uh, we don't we don't use that as a crutch. So and we practice. We rehearse at a church because they give us a lots of space. And uh, we rehearse there, and sometimes there are people in there, you know, and like doing whatever. And so we try to keep PG anyway. And that way, when we do perform like on stage at our theater, we do have that a little. We can we can let loose of the leash a little bit, right? But yeah, it's just getting a read on the crowd. Um, and so maybe if, uh, so, just just thinking of the demographic, kind of. What else? Yes. Have you all in your current group been together for a while? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we, so the group has been around, um, you know, I, I wasn't there when it started, but it started in, in like the 2000, um, and it was called Improbabilities, and then it started with just short form and progressed to uh, long form and short form, um, and we, we have a really big group for the Improv Troop, we have like 25 people, and so at any given time on a Friday or Saturday night, when you see us perform, you'll see just a, a, a small selection, like six people from the group, um, and there's like a core group of us who have worked together for a while, but we do, I will say, we get a lot of turnover um, because people will sometimes need to go to Chicago or go to LA and find, find some more success there, like in a bigger market. Um, but we, we, tend, we, we have a good group that has been together for a number of years. So, yeah. And it's all about building that ensemble spirit, that group mind. We do a lot of stuff outside of rehearsals too. You know, sometimes we'll do like gift exchanges, things like that, because we do want to do want to bond with each other outside of of the rehearsal process. Do mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of people who are, I've done a little bit of stand-up, and we have a lot of people in our group who are pretty talented at that, and who do open mics, and um, have got some success that way too. But, uh, and sometimes we'll have stand-up in our theater. <laughs> One more? Anybody? Uh, there in the back. Do you ever get stumped or freeze on stage? Um, that's a great question. Um, I guess the short answer is yes, but I know it's it's kind of like a technique. I know how to do that well, or I'm like I have no idea what's going on, and I'll like try and present it in a way that's funny to the audience. So I'll just be like, I won't ever like break character, you know. I won't ever do that and just be like, I don't know. <laughs> Felix, you got your ideas here. I don't know what to do. Like I would never do that, but maybe I will put a little performer twist on it where I'm like. I'm taking a pause here because my character is thinking very intently, <laughs> or uh, I'm absorbing the information I just heard. Uh, yes, I would say yes, but here's the thing: is usually the answer would be no because I will say something because that's the that's the big role of improv. Just do something. Um, there's an improv instructor called Mick Napier who's a pretty big deal, and he says your best thing you can do is just make a bold choice when you come out on stage. And um, when we play a game, like a rhyming game, uh, like a game we, we sometimes play called Do Do Run Run, and I have no idea what, what rhyme I'm gonna do, I'll just make up something. I'll just be like, bim bop bop do bop bop And I'll get eliminated, because it's an elimination game, but I will have been eliminated boldly. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't know, sing boldly, basically. Or, do, or lose gracefully, is the way I do it. So, I, I yeah, so yeah. Okay, all right, thank you so much.